Hand Washing, Wikipedia Audio Hand Washing, also known as Hand Hygiene, is the act of cleaning hands for the purpose of removing soil, dirt and microorganisms. If water and soap is not available, hands can be cleaned with ash instead. A substitute for tap water is pouring water from a hanging jerrycan or gourd. Medical hand hygiene refers to hygiene practices related to medical procedures. Hand washing before administering medicine or medical care can prevent or minimize the spread of disease. The main medical purpose of washing hands is to cleanse the hands of pathogens and chemicals which can cause harm or disease. This is especially important for people who handle food or work in the medical field, but also important practice for the general public. Hand washing with soap consistently at critical moments during the day prevents the spread of diseases like diarrhea and cholera which are transmitted through fecal-oral routes. People can become infected with respiratory diseases such as influenza or the common cold, for example, if they do not wash their hands before touching their eyes, nose, or mouth. Public Health Hand washing has the following health benefits. In developing countries, childhood mortality rates related to respiratory and diarrheal diseases can be reduced by introducing simple behavioral changes, such as hand washing with soap. This simple action can reduce the rate of mortality from these diseases by almost 50%. Helps minimize the spread of influenza, diarrhea prevention, avoiding respiratory infections, a preventive measure for infant deaths at their home birth deliveries, improved hand washing practices have been shown to lead to small improvements in the length growth in children under 5 years of age. Interventions that promote hand washing can reduce diarrhea episodes by about a third, and this is comparable to providing clean water in low-income areas. Furthermore, 48% reductions in diarrhea episodes can be associated with hand washing with soap. Hand washing with soap is the single most effective and inexpensive way to prevent diarrhea and acute respiratory infections as automatic behavior performed in homes, schools, and communities worldwide. Pneumonia, a major ARI, is the number one cause of mortality among children under 5 years old, taking the life of an estimated 1.8 million children per year. Diarrhea and pneumonia together account for almost 3.5 million child deaths annually. According to UNICEF, Turning hand washing with soap before eating and after using the toilet into an ingrained habit can save more lives than any single vaccine or medical intervention, cutting deaths from diarrhea by almost half and deaths from acute respiratory infections by one quarter. Hand washing is usually integrated together with other sanitation interventions as part of water, sanitation, and hygiene programs. Hand washing also protects against impetigo which is transmitted through direct physical contact. A possible small detrimental effect of hand washing is that frequent hand washing can lead to skin damage due to drying of the skin. Excessive hand washing is commonly seen as a symptom of obsessive compulsive disorder. There are five critical times during the day where washing hands with soap is important to reduce fecal-oral transmission of disease, after defecation, after cleaning a child's bottom, before feeding a child, before eating, and before preparing food or handling raw meat, fish, or poultry. After washing and drying hands with the warm air dryer, the total number of bacteria was found to increase on average on the finger pads by 194% and on the palms by 254%. Drying with the jet air dryer resulted in an increase on average of the total number of bacteria on the finger pads by 42% and on the palms by 15%.
after washing and drying hands with a paper towel, the total number of bacteria was reduced on average on the finger pads by up to 76% and on the palms by up to 77%. In many countries, there is a low prevalence of hand washing with soap. A study of hand washing in 54 countries in 2015 found that on average, 38.7% of households practiced hand washing with soap. Several behavior change methodologies now exist to increase uptake of the behavior of hand washing with soap at the critical times. Group hand washing for school children at set times of the day is one option in developing countries to ingrain hand washing in children's behaviors. The Essential Health Care Program implemented by the Department of Education in the Philippines is an example of at scale action to promote children's health and education. Durming twice a year, supplemented with washing hands daily with soap, brushing teeth daily with fluoride, is at the core of this national program. It has also been successfully implemented in Indonesia. The jet air dryer, which blows air out of the unit at claimed speeds of 400 miles per hour, was capable of blowing microorganisms from the hands and the unit and potentially contaminating other washroom users and the washroom environment up to 2 meters away. Use of a warm air hand dryer spread microorganisms up to 0.25 meters from the dryer. Paper towels showed no significant spread of microorganisms. Health benefits As a general rule, hand washing protects people poorly or not at all from droplet and airborne diseases, such as measles, chickenpox, influenza, and tuberculosis. Removal of microorganisms from skin is enhanced by the addition of soaps or detergents to water. The main action of soaps and detergents is to reduce barriers to solution, and increase solubility. Water is an inefficient skin cleanser because fats and proteins, which are components of organic soil, are not readily dissolved in water. Cleansing is, however, aided by a reasonable flow of water. Solid soap, because of its reusable nature, may hold bacteria acquired from previous uses. A small number of studies which have looked at the bacterial transfer from contaminated solid soap have concluded transfer is unlikely as the bacteria are rinsed off with the foam. The CDC still states liquid soap with hands-free controls for dispensing is preferable. Antibacterial soaps have been heavily promoted to a health-conscious public. To date, there is no evidence that using recommended antiseptics or disinfectants selects for antibiotic-resistant organisms in nature. However, Antibacterial soaps contain common antibacterial agents such as triclosan, which has an extensive list of resistant strains of organisms. So, even if antibiotic-resistant strains aren't selected for by antibacterial soaps, they might not be as effective as they are marketed to be. A comprehensive analysis from the University of Oregon School of Public Health indicated that plain soaps are as effective as consumer-grade antibacterial soaps containing triclosan in preventing illness and removing bacteria from the hands. Hot water that is comfortable for washing hands is not hot enough to kill bacteria. Bacteria grow much faster at body temperature. However, warm Soapy water is more effective than cold, soapy water at removing the natural oils on your hands which hold soils and bacteria. Contrary to popular belief however, scientific studies have shown that using warm water has no effect on reducing the microbial load on hands. A hand sanitizer or hand antiseptic is a non-water-based hand hygiene agent. In the late 1990s and early part of the 21st century, alcohol rub non-water-based hand hygiene agents began to gain popularity. 
Most are based on isopropyl alcohol or ethanol formulated together with a thickening agent such as carbomer into a gel, or a humectant such as glycerin into a liquid, or foam for ease of use and to decrease the drying effect of the alcohol. 5 Critical Times During the Day Behavior Change Hand sanitizers containing a minimum of 60 to 95 percent alcohol are efficient germ killers. Alcohol rub sanitizers kill bacteria, multi-drug resistant bacteria, tuberculosis, and some viruses and hepatitis and fungi. Alcohol rub sanitizers containing 70 percent alcohol kill 99.97 percent of the bacteria on hands 30 seconds after application and 99.99 percent to 99.999 percent of the bacteria on hands one minute after application. Before patient care, after environmental contact, after exposure to blood slash body fluids, before an aseptic task, and, after patient care. Other Aspects Substances used Soap and detergents Solid soap Antibacterial soap Hand sanitizers are most effective against bacteria and less effective against some viruses. Alcohol-based hand sanitizers are almost entirely ineffective against norovirus or Norwalk-type viruses, the most common cause of contagious gastroenteritis. Enough hand antiseptic or alcohol rub must be used to thoroughly wet or cover both hands. The front and back of both hands and between and the ends of all fingers are rubbed for approximately 30 seconds until the liquid foam or gel is dry. As well as fingertips must be washed well too rubbing them in both palms alternatively. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention in the USA recommends hand washing over hand sanitizer rubs, particularly when hands are visibly dirty. The increasing use of these agents is based on their ease of use and rapid killing activity against microorganisms, however, they should not serve as a replacement for proper hand washing unless soap and water are unavailable. Water Frequent use of alcohol-based hand sanitizers can cause dry skin unless emollients and slash or skin moisture risers are added to the formula. The drying effect of alcohol can be reduced or eliminated by adding glycerin and slash or other emollients to the formula. In clinical trials, alcohol-based hand sanitizers containing emollients caused substantially less skin irritation and dryness than soaps or antimicrobial detergents. Allergic contact dermatitis, contact urticaria syndrome or hypersensitivity to alcohol or additives present in alcohol hand rubs rarely occur. The lower tendency to induce irritant contact dermatitis became an attraction as compared to soap and water hand washing. Despite their effectiveness, non-water agents do not cleanse the hands of organic material, but simply disinfect them. It is for this reason that hand sanitizers are not as effective as soap and water at preventing the spread of many pathogens since the pathogens still remain on the hands. Alcohol-free hand sanitizer efficacy is heavily dependent on the ingredients and formulation, and historically has significantly underperformed alcohol and alcohol rubs. More recently, formulations that use benzalkonium chloride have been shown to have persistent and cumulative antimicrobial activity after application, unlike alcohol, which has been shown to decrease in efficacy after repeated use, probably due to progressive adverse skin reactions. Many people in low-income communities cannot afford soap and use ash or soil instead. Ash or soil may be more effective than water alone, but may be less effective than soap. Evidence quality is poor. 
One concern is that if the soil or ash is contaminated with microorganisms it may increase the spread of disease rather than decrease it. Like soap, ash is also a disinfecting agent. Who recommended ash or sand as alternative to soap when soap is not available? One must use soap and warm running water if possible, and wash all skin and nails thoroughly. However, ash can substitute soap and cold water can also be used. First one should rinse hands with warm water, keeping hands below wrists and forearms, to prevent contaminated water from moving from the hands to the wrists and arms. The warm water helps to open pores, which helps with the removal of microorganisms, without removing skin oils. One should use 5 milliliters of liquid soap, to completely cover the hands, and rub wet, soapy hands together, outside the running water, for at least 20 seconds. The most commonly missed areas are the thumb, the wrist, the areas between the fingers, and under fingernails. Artificial nails and chipped nail polish harbor microorganisms. Then one should rinse thoroughly, from the wrist to the fingertips to ensure that any microorganisms fall off the skin rather than onto skin. Hand antiseptics. One should use a paper towel to turn off the water. Dry hands and arms with a clean towel, disposable or not and use a paper towel to open the door. Moisturizing lotion is often recommended to keep the hands from drying out. Dry skin can lead to skin damage which can increase the risk for the transmission of infection. Ash or mud Various low-cost options can be made to facilitate hand washing where tap water and slash or soap is not available e.g. pouring water from a hanging jerrycan or gourd with suitable holes and slash or using ash if needed in developing countries. In situations with limited water supply, there are water-conserving solutions, such as tippy taps and other low-cost options. A tippy tap is a simple technology using a jug suspended by a rope, and a foot operated lever to pour a small amount of water over the hands in a bar of soap. Techniques Soap and water Low cost options when water is scarce Effective drying of the hands is an essential part of the hand hygiene process but there is some debate over the most effective form of drying in public washrooms. A growing volume of research suggests paper towels are much more hygienic than the electric hand dryers found in many washrooms. In 2008, a study was conducted by the University of Westminster, London, and sponsored by the paper towel industry the European Tissue Symposium to compare the levels of hygiene offered by paper towels, warm air hand dryers and the more modern jet air hand dryers. The key findings were The scientists also carried out tests to establish whether there was the potential for cross-contamination of other washroom users and the washroom environment as a result of each type of drying method. They found that In 2005, in a study conducted by TUV product UND Umwelt, different hand drying methods were evaluated. The following changes in the bacterial count after drying the hands were observed. Many different hand dryer manufacturers exist, and hand dryers have been compared against drying with paper towels. Hand washing using hand sanitizing wipes is an alternative during traveling in the absence of soap and water. Alcohol-based hand sanitizer must contain at least 60% alcohol to be effective. Medical hand washing became mandatory long after Hungarian physician Ignaz Semmelweis discovered its effectiveness in preventing disease in a hospital environment. There are nowadays electronic devices in some hospitals that provide feedback to remind hospital staff to wash their hands when they forget. 
One study has found decreased infection rates with their use. Medical hand washing is for a minimum of 15 seconds, using generous amounts of soap and water or gel to lather and rub each part of the hands. Hands should be rubbed together with digits interlocking. If there is debris under fingernails, a bristle brush may be used to remove it. Since germs may remain in the water on the hands, it is important to rinse well and wipe dry with a clean towel. After drying, the paper towel should be used to turn off the water. This avoids recontaminating the hands from those surfaces. The purpose of hand washing in the healthcare setting is to remove pathogenic microorganisms and avoid transmitting them. The New England Journal of Medicine reports that a lack of hand washing remains at unacceptable levels in most medical environments, with large numbers of doctors and nurses routinely forgetting to wash their hands before touching patients, thus transmitting microorganisms. One study showed that proper hand washing and other simple procedures can decrease the rate of catheter-related bloodstream infections by 66%. The World Health Organization has published a sheet demonstrating standard hand washing and hand rubbing in healthcare sectors. The draft guidance of hand hygiene by the organization can also be found at its website for public comment. A relevant review was conducted by Whitby ETL. Commercial devices can measure and validate hand hygiene, if demonstration of regulatory compliance is required. The World Health Organization has five moments for washing hands. The addition of antiseptic chemicals to soap confers killing action to a hand washing agent. Such killing action may be desired prior to performing surgery or in settings in which antibiotic resistant organisms are highly prevalent. To scrub one's hands for a surgical operation, it is necessary to have a tap that can be turned on and off without touching it with the hands, some chlorhexidine or iodine wash, sterile towels for drying the hands after washing, and a sterile brush for scrubbing and another sterile instrument for cleaning under the fingernails. All jewelry should be removed. This procedure requires washing the hands and forearms up to the elbow, usually two six minutes. Long scrub times are not necessary. When rinsing, water on the forearms must be prevented from running back to the hands. After hand washing is completed, the hands are dried with a sterile cloth and a surgical gown is donned. To reduce the spread of germs, it is better to wash the hands or use a hand antiseptic before and after tending to a sick person. For control of staphylococcal infections in hospitals, it has been found that the greatest benefit from hand cleansing came from the first 20% of washing, and that very little additional benefit was gained when hand cleansing frequency was increased beyond 35%. Washing with plain soap results in more than triple the rate of bacterial infectious disease transmitted to food as compared to washing with antibacterial soap. Comparing hand rubbing with alcohol-based solution with hand washing with antibacterial soap for a median time of 30 seconds each showed that the alcohol hand rubbing reduced bacterial contamination 26% more than the antibacterial soap. But soap and water is more effective than alcohol-based hand rubs for reducing H1N1 influenza A virus and Clostridium difficile spores from hands. In developing countries, hand washing with soap is recognized as a cost-effective, essential tool for achieving good health, and even good nutrition. However, a lack of reliable water supply, soap, or hand washing facilities in people's homes, at schools and at the workplace make it a challenge to achieve universal hand washing behaviors. For example, in most of rural Africa hand-washing taps close to every private or public toilet are scarce, 
even though cheap options exist to build hand washing stations. However, low hand washing rates rather can also be the result of ingrained habits rather than due to a lack of soap or water. The promotion and advocacy of hand washing with soap can influence policy decisions, raise awareness about the benefits of hand washing, and lead to long term behavior change of the population. For this to work effectively, monitoring and evaluation are necessary. One example for hand washing promotion in schools is the three star approach by UNICEF that encourages schools to take simple, inexpensive steps to ensure that students wash their hands with soap, among other hygienic requirements. When minimum standards are achieved, schools can move from one to ultimately three stars. Building hand washing stations can be a part of hand washing promotion campaigns that are carried out in order to reduce diseases and child mortality. Global Hand Washing Day is another example of an awareness raising campaign that is trying to achieve behavior change. Few studies have considered the overall cost effectiveness of hand washing in developing countries in relationship to Dallas averted. However, one review suggests that promoting hand washing with soap is significantly more cost effective than other water and sanitation interventions. The importance of hand washing for human health, particularly for people in vulnerable circumstances like mothers who had just given birth or wounded soldiers in hospitals, was first recognized in the mid 19th century by two remarkable pioneers of hand hygiene the Hungarian physician Ignaz Semmelweis who worked in Vienna, Austria, and Florence Nightingale, the English founder of modern nursing. At that time most people still believed that infections were caused by foul odors called miasmas. In the 1980s, foodborne outbreaks and healthcare-associated infections led the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to more actively promote hand hygiene as an important way to prevent the spread of infection. The outbreak of swine flu in 2009 led to increased awareness in many countries of the importance of washing hands with soap to protect oneself from such infectious diseases. For example, posters with correct hand washing techniques were hung up next to hand washing sinks in public toilets and in the toilets of office buildings and airports in Germany. The phrase washing one's hands of something means declaring one's unwillingness to take responsibility for the thing or share complicity in it. It originates from the Bible passage in Matthew where Pontius Pilate washed his hands of the decision to crucify Jesus Christ, but has become a phrase with a much wider usage in some English communities. In Shakespeare's Macbeth, Lady Macbeth begins to compulsively wash her hands in an attempt to cleanse an imagined stain, representing her guilty conscience regarding crimes she had committed and induced her husband to commit. It has also been found that people, after having recalled or contemplated unethical acts, tend to wash hands more often than others, and tend to value hand washing equipment more. Furthermore, those who are allowed to wash their hands after such a contemplation are less likely to engage in other cleansing compensatory actions, such as volunteering. Symbolic hand washing using water but no soap to wash hands, is a part of ritual hand washing featured in many religions, including Baha'i faith, Hinduism, and Tevila and Nedalat Yadayam in Judaism. Similar to these are the practices of Lavabo in Christianity, Wudu in Islam and Masaji in Shint. Drying with towels or hand dryers. Hand washing with wipes. Medical use Method Effectiveness in healthcare settings Developing countries Promotion campaigns Cost effectiveness History
Society and Culture Moral Aspects Religion